Carl Brookins, mystery author. With me are my co-hosts on this program that we call the Minnesota Crime Wave Presents. Over here on my right, your left, is Kent Kruger, who writes the Corcoran O'Connor series set in the great north woods of Minnesota. On my left, on your right, is Ellen Hart, Princess Ellen. Thank you, Carl. You're so welcome. <laughs> who writes two series, the Sophie Greenway food series and the Jane Lawless mystery series. Well, food series, but it's really a mystery series. Mm -hmm. Food, but it has a lot to do with food. One of these days we're gonna have to get into why you write, why both of your series have to do with, in some ways okay. with food. I'd love to talk about that. We have an interesting program for you this time. First, we're gonna talk about something that the Minnesota Crime Wave got involved in, which is, which is mystery anthologies, because we also publish uh, books. And we have a, we have a guest who is in charge of one of the premier literary centers of the country, the, the, uh, the Loft Literary Center. Jocelyn Hale will be, will be with us. And then finally, I guess we're gonna talk about one of my books, which is, should be very, really very interesting. All right, let's talk about the anthologies first. Okay, okay. A couple of years ago, um, we got this very crazy idea to so whose crazy idea, whose crazy idea was that? Yeah. Who was we? It was, well, I had always thought it would be a really wonderful thing because there's so many wonderful uh, crime writers in, the, the, in this area, in Minnesota, to do an anthology and to um, give people a chance to get a little taste mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. a short story of all of these people. And, but, you know, there were some huge hurdles. There were, uh, could we get the writers to do it? Yes. Can we find someone to publish the book? True. And then, you know, will it have any success? Well, there was another hurdle. Well, there was a title. Because at the time... Oh. Well, the I, thought, time, I thought it was going to be the title. No, oh, no, no, no. What that, was the hurdle? That's a, that, that's no, oh, we I, had no I, money. I, well, we had no money. And <laughs> now I'm intrigued. What we was were, the, other? Yeah. the other? Well, if you'll stop, I'll tell you. The other thing was that at the time anthologies were considered dead. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. All over the country people saying, short stories, no, there's no market, and forget about anthology. Yeah. But then we had to have a title. We decided to forge ahead anyway. We did. And we came up with The Silence of the Loons, mm -hmm. uh, which is a play on The Silence of the Lambs and the, the state The Minnesota bird, State Bird. Right, which should right. be the mosquito, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not a bird. It's not a bird, case, that's true, but it does right. fly. Um, and so... My question to you two is, let's talk about a little bit about why we did it. A little bit about why we did it and our experience with working with Noden Press mm -hmm. and... Um, well, let me, let me just jump in then and say that the reason that I liked the idea was, was, goes back to what you said first. The idea of putting together a group of authors and saying, all right, write a short story and we'll publish it and see if we can make some money for one thing, but to get some inf some some stories out there that people who might not have read mysteries would would have a chance to experience some of the really great writers in the Minnesota area. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the one of the things that I liked most about the first anthology we did was the conceit at the heart of yes. it. Yes, and she explained that. Yeah, if you give a a good mystery writer an assignment, to write a short story. That's not a tremendously challenging task. So what we did was this. Love this. <laughs> we created, as I recall, over a, uh, over a couple of bottles of wine. Probably. A pool of eight clues. And we told each of the authors that you have to use at least four of these clues in the construction of your story. At which point, everyone who had agreed to it went, oh my god. At, but they all knuckled down and they did it. And That's what right. they ended up giving us were these incredibly diverse stories, mm -hmm. terrific stories that all use many of the same elements. That mm -hmm. was just, it was, it, that was an exhilarating experience to see from an editorial mm -hmm. standpoint. Mm -hmm. One of the sly things about that was, was the sequence, though. I, th I thought we were, we were brilliant, even though we hadn't really <laughs> planned this out. 
You know, we went around. I always thought we were brilliant. Do you, do you well, think yes, but, but we asked all these, all these friends of ours, all these good Minnesota mystery writers, to agree to write a story for no money, I might, or very little, what amounts to no money. And they all agreed. Yeah. Then we told them yeah. what the con we we said it had to be set in Minnesota, and there had to be a murder, right? right. But we didn't tell them about the clues until later. That's right. I, after they were on but board. But you know that is really, I think, what made that first volume um, as popular as I mean that 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 particular uh, anthology has been a, a local bestseller. True. Um, and is still selling well. Yeah, and it after. wasn't just the fact that it was Minnesota. Minnesota I don't authors. Think so, it no. was the con when you hear the conceit at the heart of it, it's intriguing. Yeah, it is. It? This is how every author used those clues so differently. So why didn't we do that in the second? Well, anthology? why didn't we? So long about, <laughs> long well, about. But before that, I, before we get to the second anthology, because you know you get a, you get one success and you say right away, oh, let's do another one. One of the things we found out fairly recently is that even though it's a Minnesota book, The Silence of the Loons, it's a Minnesota book with a Minnesota publisher, Note with all press. Minnesota authors, we've now found quite a bit of success, or at least quite a bit of interest in it, in other places in the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, yeah, the true. Dakotas. That's and it's true. still selling very well. well really all over, because old. I was in Anchorage, Alaska last fall, and I saw it there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Wow. Yeah, I know. Pretty That's amazing. Great. So we said we had this this great success with Silence of the Loons. So what did we do? We did it again. We did it again. We did it again. With Son of Silence of the Loons. That's what I wanted to call I it. I know you did. <laughs> but but you we ended up calling it, it Resort to Murder. Carl exactly. title, right? Yeah. Oh, and that, so now what is the conceit behind? Well the conceit behind this now, this anthology was was really was something that's truly upper Midwest and truly Minnesotan. In the summer, Minnesotans, if they can afford to, they go up north. Specifically, they go to resorts. And so, of course, we called it Resort to Murder. The conceit was there had to be a murder. It had to be set on a real Minnesota resort. And the authors had to write a story that used a real resort, except for the name. Mm -hmm. Because details of the resort, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yep. right. exactly, and and that was a little easier. But there was another there was another aspect to it that worked, and that was that we that we opened up the possibility, we opened up the calls. It's sometimes referred to to uh, authors, writers, published writers, but they didn't necessarily have to have been mystery authors. Which made for a very different texture in in the Good stories, I think. M mysteries that don't adhere to the strict mm -hmm. mystery exactly. um, conceit that you, or structure that you typically think of. But you know, one of the things about their short, both collections was we had authors who, uh, who, who have worked with novels before and yes. hadn't really tackled short stories. Yes. And right. the reaction to doing the shorter form was, was diverse and very interesting. Mm -hmm. Some of them said, I'll never do this again. It was too difficult. Right. And mm -hmm. others were just thrilled with that's the right. process. Yeah, it, that's, right. it, it, that's an interesting phenomenon because uh, some writers don't seem to have any problem working either in a very short form, like a short story, or and it was not a long. We didn't. We allowed them only seventy five hundred words, yeah. so mm -hmm. that that made a big difference. I, I think there are people who will yeah. say that a, a short story is infinitely more difficult, right, exactly. than a novel because you have to be so much more concise and you know get right to it, and so. And I love short stories, and I think there's a resurgent interest in this country now and in short the, stories. And the sh and the second anthology is doing really quite well, so mm -hmm. we understand. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Okay. We're going to move right on, so we'll be back in a minute with our guest, Jocelyn Hale. Meanwhile, here's a look at some topics that we're going to discuss in up upcoming programs. <laughs> 